In this video, you're going to learn how to react after a bad game. Hey there, I'm Eli Strom, a performance coach and the founder of SuccessStartWithin.com. Now, no athlete wants to have a bad game, but the truth is, bad games are going to happen. The question is, what are you going to do after you have a bad game? How have you historically responded to bad games? Have you been really upset? Have you been a little depressed? Have you felt a little embarrassed to go to the, the next practice if you feel like the loss was your fault? How has that impacted your performances moving forward? If you have one bad game, whether it's a bad game for your team or a personal bad game, how confident are you going into the next game? I would imagine that you're probably less confident than you are if you have a really good game going into the next game because you're building on that momentum. So here's the thing. If you react badly to a bad game, and, and by reacting badly, I mean, you know, kind of holding on to that loss, holding on to the mistakes you made, beating yourself up, and really feeling negative about it moving forward, what that can lead to is some fear of failure. And it can also lead to some performance anxiety. The fear of failure and performance anxiety form because you really don't want to have this bad game again, which of course is natural. But those, those intense negative feelings you have after the bad game, they can start to build up. So going into the next game and maybe the next game after that, you might have some fear. And that fear then drives anxiety because the fear is, I hope I don't make mistakes. I'm afraid of making mistakes because I don't want to feel like I did after this last bad game. And then the performance anxiety forms because you're worried now. You're going into your performance worried because you don't want to make mistakes, because you're afraid of make, making mistakes, because you don't want to have another bad game. That's what can happen if you react badly to bad games, where you're just beating yourself up too much and getting too upset and you're carrying it with you moving forward. So how can you respond in a better way to a bad game? Well, I first want to start off by saying, I'm not trying to convince you to enjoy bad games. That's completely not what I'm doing because I know bad games suck. They're awful. You don't want to play badly. You don't want to lose as a team, all that, right? But the thing is, if you've already lost, you've already had a bad game, the next question becomes, how do you handle that bad game in as positive a way as you can to put yourself in a position to play well during your next game? Because once that game's finished, the most important thing is the next game. And if you react, react badly to this past bad game, you're only putting yourself in a worse position for the next game. Now I understand, you know, sometimes you beat yourself up because you say, I don't want to make those mistakes. I've got to beat myself up because I don't want to make that error again. I don't want to miss all those shots again, all of that. But when you beat yourself up, like I said earlier, that usually leads to some fear of failure. So instead of beating yourself up, we're going to kind of approach this in a more productive way where you're going to work on actually learning things from this bad game. Because if you can learn things from this bad game, you don't need to beat yourself up over the mistakes you made. You just need to learn and you need to improve so that the next game, you actually don't make those mistakes. And so there's a very simple way that you can actually respond differently to bad games. And it happens by you applying a self-evaluation system. This evaluation system is made up of two very simple questions, but they are two very important questions. The first question is, what did I do well today? The second question is, where can I improve today? Or what can I learn from today? You want to make sure that you answer that first question first. Why do you want to answer the first question first? Because remember, our goal is to learn something from the bad game to then apply to your game moving forward. And if you kind of immediately start looking at your mistakes from that bad game, if you haven't looked at what you did well to boost your mood a little bit, then it's going to be very easy to start beating yourself up. And if you beat yourself up, it's a lot more likely that you're actually not going to learn anything. So you first want to identify what you did well. That's going to put you in a little bit better of a mood. So you're going to be able to objectively look at your mistakes and where you can actually improve. The next part of this evaluation system is saying, where can I improve or what can I learn? Now, when you start to think about this second question, your mind's immediately going to shoot to the outcome. So let's use the example of a basketball player. If you shot really badly during the game, immediately your mind's going to say, I need to shoot better. That's okay for you to think that as long as you use it to guide yourself to go a little bit deeper. You need to ask, okay, why did I miss those shots? What do I need to do a little bit differently? Was I trying to force some bad shots? Was I taking good shots in my... My mechanics were off. Was my actual shot off? Was it not focused? You want to start digging a little bit deeper and finding things you can actually work on. Because it's one thing to say, going into the next game, I want to shoot better. It's completely different to say, going into the next game, I'm going to look for more open shots. That is a completely different way of just kind of approaching it. Another example is if you're a pitcher and you say, I need to throw more strikes. Well, yeah, going into the next game, you could say, I need to throw more strikes. But you could also say, 
why did I throw those balls, right? Why was I not throwing strikes? Maybe you were trying to rush your delivery a little bit. Maybe you weren't focused on picking up your target. So then going into the next game, you say, I want to be a little bit more calm and controlled with my delivery, or I want to focus on picking up my target earlier. The point of this evaluation system is to identify things you did well, to kind of increase your confidence, put yourself in a better mood. But then also the second part is you want to actually identify the mistakes you made and how you can learn. Because it was a bad game, we're not we're not covering up that fact that it was a bad game. But instead of beating yourself up over the bad game, you're going to actually take something to learn and improve for the next game. Now, the second part of this is that after the bad game, you also want to pay attention to the way that you're thinking. You don't want to say after the bad game, I suck, I'm awful, I'm never going to play well, I can't believe I'm the worst player to ever play, why do I even play, I should just quit. You don't want to have those kinds of thoughts because once again, they're going to lead to more feelings of fear, a little confidence, you know, self-doubt, all that moving forward. So after a bad game, you want to really pay attention to what kind of thoughts you're having, right? How are you talking to yourself? But then also, how are you speaking to other people? How are you telling other people about the game? You know, if you're talking to your parents or your friends, instead of just saying, I suck, that was an awful game, you know, kind of go through that evaluation system and say, yeah, you know, I didn't shoot that well today, but it was because I was trying to force some bad shots or I was, you know, I didn't hit that well today because I was swinging at bad pitches or I really felt like my timing was off. When you start to speak a little bit more like that, you're taking things into your control. So you can say, well, if I know that my timing was off on my swing, I'm going to work on improving my timing in practice. And then next game, I'm really, really going to focus on having better timing. When you speak like that, instead of just blatantly saying, I suck, you actually are learning things from this bad game. So moving into the next game, you're going to be in a better position to perform. And remember, that is the main goal. If you have one bad game, that bad game is finished. You're now responsible for this next game. So your job is to react to that bad game in a way that puts you in a better position to play well moving forward. If you have any questions about reacting to a bad game or any other sports psychology topic, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos each day on sports psychology and mental training. Thank you for watching and I wish you the best of success in all that you do.